Hi everyone, and welcome to another video blog newsletter with Dr. Bill. Thank you for being here and uh, sharing this time with me. And yet again, another blog on the COVID-19 coronavirus. By the time you get this, hopefully things will be calming down. And maybe what I'm going to share with you may be also old news by the time you hear this. But I have a, a point that I want to make with the news. Now, I'm not going to get political or conspiratorial, well, what a word. Uh, but I just want to create a background to make a point. Now, as if you've been listening to the news, and if you haven't been living in a cave, you'll hear that there's been a lot of questions asked about the Chinese Communist Party, the government in China, not the Chinese people, but the Chinese Communist Party, or the government in China, and their role in the spread of the coronavirus across the world, which has created so much devastation, not only you know health-wise, but economy-wise. Now, it's generally assumed that the coronavirus uh, came from what they call one of the uh, wet markets in Wuhan, where they sell animals uh, for human consumption, and that it came from bats or a bat. Now, what's interesting is that they don't sell bats in this market, so you can figure that one out. So they, they've labelled it as a, as a bat virus, and that they're saying, it's come from the bat or an animal, from the animal to the human, and that's it jumped. Now, I don't know how common that is or how easy or difficult that, that is, because I'm not an epidemiologist. But uh, that's, what, that's what some people are saying. Now, with the video link that I've sent you or attached to this, my video, you'll notice that they're actually presenting evidence that the virus didn't come from the wet market, but came from a bio-warfare lab fairly close to the wet market in Wuhan. That they were doing research on a on viruses as a bioweapon. And the there's a lot of interesting details with this, but I'm just gonna be just gonna be brief. That they used a a bat virus, the corona bat virus, and they modified it, they genetically modified it so that it become much more dangerous and, and virulent in the human body, whereas the other one was uh, much less harmful. And so they modified, genetically modified this. So this uh, video is claiming that the virus is actually not animal or bat derived, it's laboratory derived. And they present the evidence for that. Either way, whether that's true or not, or whether it was, whether it did come from the wet markets or the bat, whatever is the reason, what is fairly clear is that the Chinese didn't handle it very well. That they're, they're delayed doing, you know, letting people know about it. There, are, there were doctors there that um, tried to publicise it and they were either locked up or disappeared or they've changed their... Uh, their reports. Some of the um, some of the reports they put out. Well, one of them was in Lancet, the uh, British Medical Journal, and some other very prestigious medical journals. Their results were published in those journals. So the certain uh, scientists and doctors that were actually speaking out initially, but China tried to cover it up. Uh, now, so my point is, regardless of whether it was deliberate or whether it was by accident or just how culpable the Chinese were, the effects are what they are. And sometimes we don't have any control, especially we don't have any control of what the Chinese Communist Party do. So what can we do? Because could this happen again? It's possible. And so the idea is you, we have to do what we can do. Now, fortunately, the, there are certain politicians 
Andrew Hastie is one of them. He's a federal minister minister in the government that chairs the Intelligence Committee. And he's, uh, he's seeking to do some about, something about the expansionistic um, tactics of the Chinese because they're trying to uh, infiltrate many of our establishments throughout the world. There, there's a, in the in the United Nations about fifty organisations within the United Nations, and they've tried to infiltrate them. They they can control five of them, and they've got stooges or puppets uh, managing the other. And it's been claimed that the in the World Health Organisation, the director of the World World Health Organisation is complicit with the Chinese. And if you look at the news, you'll find that he supported the Chinese and praised them, and uh, you know, even though they're, they're actually, it's their fault, but he took their side. So anyway, that's all the politics. Coming back to my point, what can we do? Obviously, politically, yes, something needs to be done so that this doesn't happen again, that there is, uh, that the Chinese are held accountable for that. And it's, it's good to see some politicians and a lot of the media is actually getting on board with that so that's really good but for us personally individual the only thing we can really do is to build up our health and our resistance so that when anything like this does happen we're forewarned and forearmed and so the, the time to get healthy is not when it happens the time to get healthy is before it happens because you can't get healthy overnight so the reason I'm, I'm um, going through this is to encourage you and persuade you to do something about your health. It does take sacrifice. It does take time. It can take money. But look at what's happened. Look at what's happened to so many people now. It's affected our health. It's affected our time. It's affected our money. So if you don't pay the price when you don't have to, if you don't pay the price now, you'll have to pay much more later. And so take out your insurance. Make sure that you are working on your health. Get educated. Get informed. Go to the right sources. That's why I'm doing these blogs, to try and provide you with the information and the ammunition to help yourselves. And yes, there's controversy. Yes, there's disagreement. Yes, there's one person saying one thing and another person saying another. So you have to use your own judgment. You have to research, you have to spend the time, and you have to decide what you're going to apply in your life. So please use this as a wake-up call, not what I'm saying, but what's happened uh, worldwide with the COVID virus, COVID-19. Look what's happened worldwide and use that to motivate yourself to make health one of your priorities in your life and i can't say any more than that and i'll continue to put out the blogs to try and help you achieve that so thank you for taking the time for following what i do and i'll continue to try and do my part not only in looking after my own health but actually helping you to look after yours so this is for you and to your health and I look forward to seeing you on my next blog. Thank you.